transformation, a beautiful transformation, the manifestation of the power of a dream, the power of hope and the power of purpose birth through pain. When I was 15 years old, I made the bold decision that I wanted to become a trauma surgeon. That being a surgeon who specialises in traumatic injuries, such as gunshot wounds or car crash wounds, for example. Now, you may be wondering why a 15 year old girl would make the bold decision that she wants to become a trauma surgeon. There is a backstory to this, which I'll share with you now. I was coming home one day with my sister and I remember hearing this roaring sound from above. Alarmed, I looked to the sky and I saw that it was the propellers of a helicopter. They were cutting through the wind as it was making its descent towards a huge grass field in the middle of a huge estate close to where I was living at the time. Filled with excitement, I asked my sister if we could travel over to where the helicopter was landing so that we could watch it land, and she agreed. Together we walked over to the grass field, and when we arrived there, I remember seeing a crowd of people gathered around. Everybody was just standing there staring. I felt quite confused because their facial expressions didn't quite match the excitement I was feeling inside. And so I turned to the closest person to me, a lady, and I asked her, why is everybody gathered here? What's happened? Her response drained all excitement from me as she told me that a young man had been stabbed. In that moment, I remember feeling a deep sense of grief as it dawned on me that this helicopter hasn't landed for any good reason at all, but rather because a young man is fighting for his life. I then remember feeling a sense of anger as I looked around thinking, Everybody's just standing here watching, but who's actually going to do something to make a difference? Who's going to do something to end this horrific cycle of young black men killing each other through the bullet of a gun or the blade of a knife? I then remember feeling a sense of disempowerment as I thought, what can I do? Just a 15 year old girl. So that evening I went home with a very heavy heart and I went straight to my room where I sat down and just meditated and prayed and cried out to God asking, what can I do to make a difference? And then an idea came to me that if I aspired to become a trauma surgeon, that would give me a platform to go into environments where young men are involved in knife and gun crime in the hope of inspiring them to be and to do better. So that my friends is the answer to why 15 year old Leanne Armitage decided that she wanted to become a trauma surgeon. Now, in order for me to make strides towards achieving this dream, I would need to go on a journey of transformation. You see, I was coming from a background where it was very uncommon for a young person to aspire to become a doctor, let alone become a doctor. I grew up in a single parent home on a council estate in Peckham, one of the most deprived areas in London. I met my biological father for the first time when I was 19. Out of my mother's five children, only one other went to university. So going to university wasn't really the culture in my family. And my mother wasn't educated past GCSE level. She hadn't been to university herself and she didn't really understand how to navigate the higher education system. In the first instance, I didn't even realize that these were huge obstacles. I just remember doing a Google search and after doing so, I realized the first thing I needed to do was get really good grades in my GCSEs. So I set myself the goal of achieving 10A stars. I didn't think I'd be able to achieve 10A stars, but I reasoned in my mind that even if I didn't reach that, I'd still reach something close to that, which would still be pretty good, right? I drafted a structured study plan and I stuck to it. I would revise for hours. I remember one particular summer, I was reading through some history books in preparation for an upcoming history exam. All of my friends were planning a trip to the park. I remember looking out my window to the beauty of the sun and then looking down at my history books. And with a sigh, I decided that I would stay home and revise for my upcoming exam. I reasoned in my mind that after my exam, I'd be able to enjoy the weather as much as I wanted to. You see, from early on, I understood the principle of delayed gratification, of consistency, self-discipline and hard work, and it paid off. To my surprise, I managed to achieve the goal I set myself for 10A stars in my GCSEs. Following this, my sister suggested that I apply for a bursary or a scholarship for a private sixth form. I agreed and together we ordered a few school prospectuses. One evening, we sat down on the carpet in my bedroom and we read through these prospectuses. There was one particular school called Mill Hill, which really stood out to me. 
They offer a bursary called the A Better Chance Bursary, which is specifically for a student who has ambitions of studying medicine. I told my sister that I liked the look of this school and this was the school that I wanted to apply to. Together we made a single application and a few months later I was actually invited for interview. It was a grueling day of about three or four interviews and there was one particular interview that I'll never forget because it involved a maths test in front of the maths teacher. For the life of me, I just could not think. I couldn't solve the maths problems. It was as if my brain had turned to jelly in my head. She was quite merciful and she helped me work through some of the maths problems and she told me that she too would feel quite nervous if she was in my position. After that day, I remember not really knowing what to think. I just decided that I'll put the experience behind me and I'd keep moving forward in the direction towards my goals for the future. A few months later, however, I received a letter in the post from the same school. I nervously opened it and to my surprise, I read that Millhill School were delighted to offer me an 100% boarding bursary as the first recipient of their A Better Chance bursary. This was a really powerful moment for me. You see, there were several moments along my journey when I struggled with self-esteem and self-confidence. The fact that I had been awarded a bursary and I was about to embark on an educational journey worth about £50,000 reassured me that I had what it took to become a doctor. I reasoned in my mind that no businessman would ever invest heavily in a venture that he didn't expect a great return from. And I saw myself as this venture that people were investing in, believing that I'd be successful in achieving my dreams of becoming a doctor. Going along this journey of self-esteem and, and developing my self-confidence didn't stop there. In fact, there were three tools that I used that I'll share with you now. The first is that I held on to positive words. This was really important because along my journey, sometimes there were negative words that were spoken over me. I remember once somebody said to me, Leanne, it doesn't matter how many A stars you get in your GCSEs. When they see you've got black in you, they won't let you become a doctor. Of course, that was absolute nonsense. But as a young person hearing something like that, it was deeply discouraging. And this made it all the more important that I held on to positive words. I remember once a lovely teaching assistant gave my entire class a bookmark when we were just 11 years old. The bookmark read, I can become anything I want to in life and nobody can stop me but myself. She reinforced this message to us and told us that when we were 18 years old, she expected that we all would still have this bookmark. I love a challenge and so I was determined to keep the bookmark. And I'm 25 years old now and I still have this bookmark and it still encourages me today. As well as holding on to positive words, I focused a lot on cultivating the right mental attitude. And this was really important because I'm a firm believer that your thoughts influence your actions, which influence your habits and thereby your reality. So cultivating and developing the right mental attitude is something that I really focused on. I would listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos, write um, encouraging words of affirmation and stick them on my walls. And I would read these on a daily basis. And this really encouraged me and helped me to have the right attitude in my mind. As well as this, I had a vision board, a visual representation of the dreams and the goals that I had for the future. This was really helpful because along my journey, there were days when I felt discouraged, days when my motivation was waning and days when I questioned whether I could even achieve this dream. But looking at my vision board, looking at the visual representation of my dreams for the future really inspired me and reminded me of why I was doing all the things that I was doing. On first applying to medical school, I was actually rejected from every single medical school without receiving a single invitation for interview. I felt heartbroken. I literally felt like my world was closing in on me. I was so discouraged and I found it so difficult. But you see, there's a fighter inside of me and that fighter rose up. I wasn't prepared to give up on my dream. I knew the vision that I had for my future and I was determined to make it a reality. I didn't give up on my dream because of the power of my why. My why has been fueling a fire in my heart ever since I was 15 years old. You see, for me, becoming a doctor was so much more than getting a good job so that I could live a reasonably comfortable lifestyle. 
For me, becoming a doctor was linked to my community. Every time I felt like giving up on my journey, I think about the young men who were losing their lives because of the bullet of a gun or the blade of a knife. I think about my desire to become a doctor and the platform that that would give me to help my community. This was my why. This was the fuel that was burning a fire in my heart that simply wouldn't go out. And thank God that I didn't give up on my dream. I actually decided to take a gap year and I reapplied to medical school. And on reapplying, I secured three medical offers and decided to study at St. George's University of London. After my second year of medical school, I became aware that there is a massive lack of diversity across UK medical schools. Less than 5% of the cohorts are coming from the most disadvantaged backgrounds. Coming from the background that I come from, I felt like I had special insight into many of the challenges that these young people were facing. And so I decided that I wanted to take matters into my own hands and I joined forces with a friend and together we co-founded a charity called the Armitage Foundation. The Armitage Foundation is a charity that's committed to increasing diversity across UK medical schools. And we do this by providing programmes to students designed to inspire them, equip them and increase their self-confidence. At present, we work with year eight and nine students, but the vision is to support students from year eight all the way up until their application to medical school. As a result of the work that I've been doing through the Armitage Foundation, in 2018, I was awarded the UK Queen's Young Leaders Award by Her Majesty the Queen at Buckingham Palace. People always ask me, Leanne, what was that moment like? The truth is it was absolutely amazing, difficult for me to put into words. I just remember thinking, what are the chances of this? That that young girl from Peckham would go on to receive an award from Her Majesty the Queen at Buckingham Palace. I say this to reinforce the message that transformation is indeed possible. You can be a transformation. You can manifest the greatness that resides inside of you. You don't have to be limited by your environment or your background. You can transform yourself. And indeed, you can also transform your community too. Thank you for listening.